So I know it's been a while since I made a new video. If you're wondering why the sunglasses and hat, it's because I fell asleep between takes and I look kind of right now. So obviously, I don't have a grand plan for all of this. So let's just see where it goes. Just got back from Target and I was able to get the two pack Captain America Civil War uh, War Machine exclusive. Now, if you don't know, this week Targets are getting the X Men Legends case and this exclusive, but they are not supposed to put them out for another week or so. So, um, if you don't have a nice, you know, person at Target to go get it for you from the back, you're kind of gonna have to wait but I was able to get someone to get this for me and uh, there was no X-Men Legends which is okay because I already have mine but um, I've been really actually excited for this because this war machine looks sick from everyone uh, reviewing it and taking pictures with it and stuff so I've been really excited to get this because the only war machine I had is the Thanos Wave 1 which is actually this figure with a different paint job so uh, let's crack this open so this two pack's not the greatest, but you know, it's not the worst either. Um, obviously the Disco, Iron Man, Mark, whatever is uh, the weak link here. Just a repaint of that War Machine like I said before. Um, yeah, it's, mm, it's just basically it's a $20 prop. You know, the pack's 40 bucks, you get two figures. So it's just a $20 Hall of Armor prop. Um, so let's get that out of here, and let's get this guy in here. So here we got the War Machine, um, obviously he's the draw of the pack. Uh, looks good, you know, has a lot of good accessories, uh, very nice if you didn't have a War Machine before. But he has a couple issues, just three minor issues. Um, his arms always stick out at an angle, you can't get them flat for like a vanilla pose or a hall of armor thing or a salute or anything like that. Uh, the ankles and the um, hips have a similar range of motion issues where just because of the sculpt and the amount of uh, you know pathway for the barbells and the double ball pegs to move is not great so his hips and feet don't move super well but you can get away with him just doing, you know, the generic war machine poses. Um, it's not a must get set if you can get it on sale, a coupon, clearance, whatever, you know, I would say totally grab it. But there's no need to rush to your targets and have them pull it out of the back. Um, I'm still happy to have it, of course. I'm not trying to on it or anything, but yeah, nothing to write home about. Big, big thank you to Josh Cheney for being able to help me out and get my uh, exclusives this year from Comic-Con. Um, you know, if it wasn't for friends looking out for each other in this community, it would be so hard to get some of these things. Um, I don't think they sold out this year of this exclusive, so whenever they put them on Hasbro Toy Shop, you might have a better chance of getting them, but it's always just, you know, an uphill battle trying to get these things. And, you know, I have mixed feelings. They're exclusives, so they should be harder to get. Um, but at the same time, they put a lot of figures that are, you know, necessary for collections and displays in these things. So, I don't know. Either way, you know, big thank you uh, again to Josh. So, you know, I had to kick this off with my man Spider-Man. And I got him in the actual uh, cardboard, you know, insert from the pack. I was going to try to do some kind of unboxing or something to better show the whole set, but it's huge, it's massive. And this is just the cardboard insert. Uh, this doesn't include the plastic, you know, overlay that they go in, or the box itself, or the flip up, or, you know, the display. 
So for people who may not card collectors, this is going to be actually a really nice set to have because you can display it um, really well. It depicts a good scene if you flip up the flap and then it looks like, you know, Spider-Man's in the prison when everybody's breaking out of their wrapped cells. But, um, you know, for men on car, or I mean, sorry, for other collectors too who open their stuff, it'll be nice. Like this little thing I'm not going to use in shots, but this is pretty cool for, you know, little video things. You got your different cells and the ground has some nice detail like um, rubble and grating and stuff. So it's pretty cool. Um, so anyways, here's Spider-Man. And this is the Pizza Spider-Man body. Uh, brand new head. I had thought it was going to be the Scarlet Spider head with repainted eyes and stuff. But it's not. It is a little bit different. Um, having it in person, I almost wish they had done the Scarlet Spider mold. Because I think it would have had uh, more accurate eyes. These look kind of weird. Uh, from the side, I think they look a lot better. But when you look at them straight up, they do just kind of look like, you know, old school cartoon eyes. Where you just got the angry slant and then a circle but um he's okay i like the darker colors um the obvious misstep here was that the hands were they have different pegs this is not the same peg as this pizza spider-man so you cannot swap the hands on them now this peg is the same as the ben riley spider-man not the scarlet spider but the ben riley as spider-man uh suit and again um i'll touch on this later with enchantress but I think it's because they're using more recent tooling for uh, this pack. So when you know Hasbro said, hey, we need you to print out this uh, Spider-Man figure again, they said, okay, no problem. They print out the hands, but it had that updated peg, whereas the uh, original Pizza Spider-Man has the double uh, peg, which I have here. So you can see it has this, you know, the two bumps versus a, a thin little bump right there. And it was just, you know, an oversight. Uh, people, maybe they didn't clarify it to the factory or, you know, they just didn't double check. Um, which, you know, normally would be forgivable. Like, oh, mistakes happen. But this, you know, for a huge company, they're constantly relying on that. Like, oh, sorry, it was a minor oversight. Or, oh, the factory messed up. It's like, you know, you're, you're a big company. You're in charge of that. That is literally your job is to make these and make them right. So the more and more they uh, do small things like this, the more, you know, unforgiving I feel is like this could have been easily, easily avoided if you had someone doing quality control, you know, just take the figure and pop them out and just start comparing it to your older figures or include the alternate hands in the set, which they did not do. Um, so, you know, yeah, I only have so much, uh, Forgiveness for big companies doing things like this. Here's the pizza Spider-Man next to him. And then, but, but, it is, all hope is not lost. Because there is a figure that you can swap the hands with. But it may look a little funny to some people. So we recently got the Ultimate Spider-Man. The teenage Peter Parker from the Ultimate Comics. And his hands have the same peg. So you can take the ultimate hands and swap them on this Raft Spider-Man and they will fit well. However, the hands themselves are a little bit smaller, which I think, looking at this, I think is fine. I think that'll work fine, but I know some people are going to see it compared to the size of um, the other hands and just think it may be too small, but I think it is totally doable. So, which is why I'm not, you know, too upset or anything. I don't think this figure's a waste. Um, so yeah, you don't have this figure. I mean, totally get this figure. Ultimate Spider-Man is awesome, and you should totally read his comics anyways. But if you only wanted one Spider-Man and you wanted this guy, I would at least get him for the hands to go with them. Um, so a lot of people were saying, you know, this is Hasbro's take on a McFarlane-type Spider-Man. I don't know if that's true because the story that this set is based on, like, the breakout-type story, um, it wasn't, you know, a McFarlane story, per se. Uh, not even per se, not at all. 
Um, I think people are just reaching because of the dark colors in the eyes and they really want, you know, people who are constantly comparing every Spider-Man to the McFarlane Spider-Man release and they just want a reason to not, you know, have to get the old McFarlane Spider-Man. Um, this is definitely not going to replace it, but it is nice and just for comparison's sake, here is McFarlane Spider-Man next to him and of course they look totally different, totally um, different eras of figures and different things going on for them. And then, uh, here's just for another arbitrary comparison. This is the Amazing Spider-Man 2 Spider-Man, and I just made a custom McFarlane head for him. Just messing around. So you can see, um, different McFarlane-esque looks, and whatever you feel is better for you, go for it. Um, personally, I just like having them all because I'm a huge Spider-Man fan, so it doesn't bother me having multiple versions of him. Uh, if you're just the type of person who's just looking for that definitive Spider-Man, you just want one and done, it's still going to be the Pizza Spidey. You get all the hands, you get the half-mast head, the pizza, um, the great mold, great vibrant colors, great sculpt. I love the eyes on this. It's very nice. So this is still going to be the definitive Spider-Man, um, but this is a nice alter ul ulterior choice, sorry. And I actually do like the darker colors for uh, different swaps. I haven't tried a bunch of the heads to see if the reds quite match up, but for an unmasked look, I do like the kind of darker colors. So it's just good to have a little bit of everything here. And... Enough harping on this web head, let's get to the villains. So first up, we have the big man himself, Abomination, aka Emil Blonsky. Uh, for those who don't know, this is primarily a Hulk villain. He was in the Incredible Hulk movie. Pretty cool. Um, you know, as far as this figure goes, the exclusive, uh, very nice. The only thing is that the waist is a little bit loose. But other than that, everything's good. And his parts are a little rubbery feeling. Um, which, you know, I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing in the long run. It's pretty nice because you can, you know, push some of these, uh, more for a better range of motion, but, you know, over time they could warp or deteriorate, so, you know, we'll see. Um, I'm not sure if this is supposed to represent a different character than the Civil War Build-A-Figure one, which has brighter shorts and a more, like, neon green, you know, tones, uh, more centered in the design and I know everybody hates when people do this but if anybody knows the answer if this is the same character as the Build-A-Figure or if they're supposed to be different iterations of him uh, if you guys could just comment and let me know because I wasn't able to find that information yet um, yeah I mean not too much to say on this guy I'm glad to have him I didn't have the Marvel Select or the Marvel Legends Abomination before, so this is a first for me. And uh, he'll be going with Leader and Hulk and all my Gamma Squad, so that'll be sick. Alright, so here we got Dread Knight, which I honestly did not know anything about prior to the announcement of this pack. Um, so I had to look him up, and turns out, you know, he's primarily an Iron Man villain. Uh, let's see here. He, Bram Velsing, was a Latverian scientist who worked for Doctor Doom, kind of got fed up with it. So he made, you know, this suit which gives him super endurance and stuff, and this lance can shoot energy blasts. Um, and he's got all kinds of little gadgets and stuff. You know, back when he was fighting Iron Man, this was a time when there was a lot of, like, weird comic little gizmo things. Um... As far as the figure goes, it's primarily the Hobgoblin body with Baron Zemo boots, gloves, belt, and sword. And then I can't remember where this hand is from. Um, I know it's been used before, but it has the side-to-side -side motion like a lot of the Black Series, which is nice for the sword and the lance. And his cape is from the Entertainment Earth box set Gamora. So the only new parts on this figure are the lance and the head. And, you know, he's, um, I guess he's a nice one to have. It'd be good to mix it up every once in a while, do a setup with him, 
you know, maybe when people are doing too much Deadpool or too much Aemon Hydra goons getting mobbed on, you could mix it up and have him in here. Um, I think he was with the Thunderbolts for a while, too. So you, if uh, we get more, like, 80s and 90s Thunderbolts, we can uh, start throwing him in there. But, you know, he's pretty cool. All right, Kilgrave, the Purple Man, which everyone knows now from Jessica Jones. If you haven't seen that on Netflix yet, you know, check it out before they drop Luke Cage. This figure's nice. It's just the Coulson suited body. Uh, the ball peg on the neck is bigger, more like Chameleon. So if you wanted to swap heads, it would be easier, but his skin tones are all molded purple, so, you know. Um... The head sculpt's actually very nice. I mean, Kilgrave is kind of, like, a lot of his uh, depictions in the comics have had kind of a narrower face and just, you know, but nothing too specific. So this kind of just, you know, regular dude look being purple, I think looks good for him. And, you know, it's a nice thing to have. I remember the uh, Earth's Mightiest Heroes episode where he had taken control of like most of the Avengers without them knowing it and he was like secretly ruling the world. That was a really cool episode. Um, so I'm probably going to get a lot of influence from that in my setups with him. But you know, nice to add to the um, rogues gallery. And here is Sandman in an all sand version form, however you'd like to say that. And it's nice, it's the uh, absorbing man body and everything, just a different head. So this was originally based on the Terax mold, so you got all those same kind of articulation, but with uh, Absorbing Man introduced, the Taskmaster style ankles, where not only do they hinge up and down and pivot side to side, but they also rotate at the actual ankle, so you get a lot more range of motion out of these feet, which is nice, especially for big characters who usually get gimped on articulation. Not a lot of people excited for this one because he's very smooth and plasticky. Um, it would have been nice to have a grainy texture sculpted all over him. Kind of like the Toy Biz one is has a grain texture but was painted as regular colors. Uh, it would have been especially nice to see a sand version be textured. But it's okay. Um, I'm excited to have this one. I have the Toy Biz one which I think overall is a much better figure. But this one looks nice. It fits in with the new Hasbro style. And I'm probably going to be using it with my Ultimate Spider-Man because the Ultimate Sandman was mostly in his sand form a lot. Um, so this is one of the characters where the design can kind of overlap. You can have him for your main Marvel Universe stuff or your Ultimate stuff if you wanted to. So that's probably what I'm going to do and then just use the Toy Biz one for the 616 or Marvel Prime Universe stuff. Uh, rumor is we're going to be getting this guy in his traditional colors as a Build-A-Figure, which I could totally see them doing that. That's really easy. And, of course, I'll scoop that up, too. So, you know, pretty decent. And last but not least, we got the bad b herself, Amora the Enchantress. Finally, finally got her. I know she's been a fan-requested figure for pff, years. Years and years. Long, long time. And this figure's nice. It's... The Scarlet Witch, um, everything except for the head and the skirt. And then these hands are similar to the hands we've been getting like on Silk and Wasp and Rogue. And because they've used the uh, more updated tooling when they were producing these figures for Comic-Con, her hands are actually removable because Rogue's pegs were made to be removable. So, I don't know exactly what you would swap in here, but you can remove her hands. And, as you see, I have her on one of these display bases because these high heels are ridiculous. They look nice on the character, they do make her taller, like as an Asgardian, but you can't stand her for sh**. Um, barely in a vanilla pose, you're gonna be fighting it. Definitely not in anything more intricate. Not even like this kind of basic pose, which I had to go for for this uh, video. Um, without this stand, she couldn't do that. So I'm definitely going to be swapping out some regular Marvel Legends females' feet, probably painting them to match a little bit better with the rings and stuff. But these, they got to get rid of these high heels, man. This notion of, like, this weird notion that Hasbro has of femininity needs to go. Um, you know, this year at Comic-Con, people were asking, how come no double-hinged elbows? 
and they had said, well, the, you know, the more articulation you add, the less feminine it looks. So we want to, you know, keep this feminine look to our figures and not, you know, scramble it up with articulation. And that's just ridiculous. There's so many figures that have double jointed elbows uh, that are female, like, you know, the Buffy figures, a lot of stuff. And it doesn't, you know, if you do it right, it doesn't make it look ugly or anything. And obviously I think they have some, you know, outdated thinking over there at Hasbro. Bunch of dudes <laughs> circle jerking in the office and they got, you know, single jointed uh, elbows, um, as, you know, limited articulation as they can make it, no hinge in the neck, all these flowy hairs, big lips, um, you know, high heels. It's just, I mean, for certain characters it works, but as a logistics thing, it's just dumb. And it really holds back the figures from being so much more. It'd be so nice if, you know, they put the effort into double jointed elbows, neck hinge, ab crunch, um, you know, more normalized feet, or at least if you're going to do heels, um, sculpt them in a way that helps balance out the weight of the figure, not just sculpting these gigantic stilettos for the sake of it. But, you know, I digress. This figure is very nice. I'm very happy to have her. And I think she's probably the main draw of the pack. If anybody, you know, is on the fence of getting this, they're probably at least going to try to get her. And I do recommend getting her. She's awesome. She also comes with the uh, Doctor Strange Scarlet Witch effects in like a translucent, almost neon green. So, you know, those are nice. We're going to have a bunch of these soon with Dazzler and the re-release Doctor Strange. So you can mix and match colors for your different scenes. But very nice, very cool. Josh was also able to get me the uh, Comic-Con exclusive Broly from the Bluefin booth. Pretty cool. Um, I couldn't really see a lot of differences in the promo pics, but in person they're very, very different. Um, it's mostly, well, it's all just the paint because they're the exact same figure. They come with the exact same accessories and everything even the energy blasts and the stand, but the paint is very different. Um, this one is much more movie accurate to the first movie, and I would say that the original release Broly is more accurate to the second movie. Um, I'll throw up a comparison in a second, but I just wanted to get this in and say that because of the more dynamic paint shading on this and the uh, dynamic paint shading as well as sculpt and detail on the Awakening Goku. These two go perfectly together. If you want to do, um, you know, setups from the first movie when Goku and Broly are fighting, I would say definitely get these two figures to be, you know, as accurate as possible for now. But very, very cool. Alright, let's compare them. So here we have both Broly's next to each other. This one's the original release and this is the new Comic-Con exclusive Broly. So the primary differences being that this skin is molded in a more like light cream color and this is more of like a very pale pale color and the shading on this skin tone is very peach and this is a more like grayish tan shading. Uh, the original has yellow hair with some green highlight shading Whereas this hair is completely green. Maybe some darker green shading, it's hard to tell. And the eyebrows, these are printed yellow, these are printed green. Uh, the regular release Broly, the hands do not have any shading, whereas this one has pretty significant shading on all the hands. Looks very nice. Uh, I thought the golds were different, but seeing them in person, I think the golds and the jewels are all basically the same. The skirts are the same, maybe this just has a little more shading on it. So the last significant difference is just the pants. Um, I think they're actually molded in the same color, but this one has blue shading, whereas this has more of that grayish tan shading. So he looks, you know, a lot more, uh, I guess, healthy. He's, you know, got more color in his skin, uh, yellower hair, you know, a little brighter. This one's a little darker, more dynamic, a little more menacing. And I think that, like I said earlier, goes to reflect the movies. How in the first movie he'd been restrained, you know, for so long and he was really demented and sick and when he transformed, you know, he burst out of his former self. Um, and of course the green hair 
Whereas Broly's second coming, where I don't remember if he quite got this big or not, but he was, you know, more um, in his natural state rather than being restrained for so long. And he had this more kind of healthier look going to him, a little more yellow in the hair. Um, if you only had to get one, uh, I would say probably go for the Comic-Con one because you're going to get more detail and it's more accurate to his most popular appearance. But, you know, if you can only get the regular release Broly, um, you know, you're not going to be hurting or anything. You can use that for all your stuff. I mean, he does have a little bit of the green in there and whatnot. So, very cool figure. Um, I'm not sure if it's just mine, but... I think my regular release Broly has a lot tighter joints than the Comic-Con one, but that could just be, you know, um, just for these two, I'm not sure. And if you don't have any Broly, I highly recommend picking him up for your figure arts line. Um, he's one of the best Dragon Ball figures they've made uh, engineering-wise. His articulation is insane. Uh, he's huge. He has great detail. He comes with, I believe, three faces each and three sets of hands, three energy balls, and a um, one of those clear stands. He actually comes, or well, they each come with one. So you get a lot, and he's really great, really cool. And make sure you do get an Awakening Goku, though, so you can do some dope setups. All right. Thanks again, Josh. Really appreciate it. So while I wrap this up, something I forgot to mention is that you can swap the Pizza Spidey head onto here. The reds are not an exact match, but it's close enough, and it looks decent. And uh, because of the whole McFarlane thing, I should have thrown the uh, McFarlane head on here just to see what it looked like. It's a little small, but, you know, whatever. Also, Spider-Man, Purple Man, and Dread Knight all have warped limbs out of the package, which I have not fixed yet. Spider-Man's elbow thing here is completely contorted as well as this bottom left knee um, similar stuff on Purple Man and Dread Knight just heat them pinch them and then run them under some cool water and that will be a quick fix to the problem so I'm trying to make these videos a little nicer than you know a couple years ago when I started making them but uh, I can only do so much on my own, so please, guys, let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of, what you'd like to see less of. I know this first episode was mostly, like, reviews of exclusives I had gotten. I uh, didn't really intend to do that, but that's just kind of how it worked out. So just, you know, give me some honest feedback. Let me know. That way I can grow and make it more fun for everybody. I do enjoy doing videos, so... Hopefully we can keep it going, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.